Today we're going to be taking a look at the pros and cons of Fortnite. I call it the good, the bad, and the husky. Part 1. I just want to give you guys a little disclaimer. This video is going to be a little longer than my normal stuff on my channel, but that's because it has to be. There's a lot of stuff that I need to go over because I don't want this to just be some bashing thing. Um, I love this game. I absolutely love it. And that's why during the cons, I'm going to give solutions to all the problems that I found. There's not many of them, but the ones I did find need to be addressed. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, Tic Tac here and welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be looking at the pros and cons of Fortnite, in my personal and humble opinion. If you are on the fence about this game, this is the video for you. So we're going to start with the small stuff and move on to the bigger issues. Um, there are a lot of great things about this game, a ton, and I'm going to go over the things that I like in this video. I hope this helps you out. I hope if you're on the fence, it will make you decide either way. It's just my opinion of how good I think the game is right now. So let's start off on graphics. For me, I love the graphics. I love Borderlands. I love Gigantic. I love Fortnite. The destructible environments are absolutely amazing. It's probably the best aspect of the entire game. Going around and destroying things. I've actually caught myself in real life looking at houses and thinking to myself, how can I destroy them to get the treasure chest that's in the attic? Catch myself doing it. It's it's insane. I really, really am enjoying the game. Most games nowadays go for a darker, grittier look, and to be cartoony and live and bright, it's kind of out of style right now. So, And all the colorful environments really help you stay like in their world. I really love the graphics. I think they're awesome. The combat is tight. It doesn't do anything new, but it doesn't do anything wrong either, and what it does, it does well. The guns feel just different enough that it makes you want to choose other ones. Um, I want to use different guns, I don't want to just use the same ones over and over, because they all feel pretty unique. This actually leads to like a minor problem, but we'll get into that. And having the classes specialize in different guns really helps you decide on what kind of character you want to play and what kind of playstyle you want to have. Um, the Outlanders have pistols and sniper rifles, the soldiers have LMGs and assault rifles, etc, etc. Each class feels just different enough that it makes you want to play as them. When you're with an Outlander and he can see through walls like goddamn Predator, it makes you want to play as that class. It's hard to do that in a game. Once you pick a class, the human mind, it's very hard to redo something that you've chosen. To do that is hard. My hat's off to them. The core gameplay loop is amazing, and it has to be. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be playing this game anymore, as for some of the glaring issues in the con section, which we'll get to, are enough to turn off a lot of gamers. Um, smashing the environment, farming, crafting, grinding, it's all simple and quick and intuitive. It really flows well with the game. It really feels better than farming in any other game like Minecraft or World of Warcraft. And then you have to sit there and push the button on the keyboard and you're not allowed to move. And you have to sit there and create your stacks of 20 leather. I'm so happy that I can run around and do things while I'm crafting the materials I need. I think that it's such a smart move and it keeps the flow of the game nice and fast. The stuff you have to do literally every mission, which is the farming, the grinding, the destroying of the environment, is fun. It is kind of involved, well it makes you feel involved, and that's what keeps it fresh and entertaining. Um, being able to destroy something in a video game is something that we don't see enough of. I believe we really should see more of it. It's a really cool mechanic. I think they did so well here. The core gameplay loop is amazing. The actual base building. Great. I have basically been able to build anything my heart desires, and I enjoy doing it. Finding out new building techniques from friends and stuff is always fun. I just found out today that you can build doors on the side of walls and not in the middle. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but now I do. There's always something new to learn for how much depth there is in this section of the game alone is insane. You could take the zombies out of the game and just have a base building horde defense kind of thing going and that game would sell millions of copies as well. I mean, different shapes and stuff, yeah we could get there, but remember guys, it's early access. You gotta give the game a break. They're really trying, the 
developers are listening to the community and they're trying to implement a lot of things that we're talking about and a lot of things that will be talked about in this video. It took me a good while to actually understand base building. Um, I was one of those people who just built a wall around their base and thought that's all I needed to do. It's not that kind of game. You need to figure out how the enemies path. That's one thing you have to learn. You have to figure out how to do tunnels. That's another thing you have to learn. You have to manage your resources so you can actually build traps and still have ammo. All of these things combined into an awesome experience that I've been addicted to since day one. And let's just talk about the depth. The depth of this game is mind-boggling. My first video tried to explain the menu. That was it. Just the menu screen. The amount of customization is insane. You can have an outlander who's proficient in shotguns. You can have um, a ninja who's all offense and no stamina or tech. You can have a constructor who can't build. You can do all of these paths in this game depending on how you like to play. I think the leveling system they tried to implement was new and unique and I applaud them for it. It came out a little cumbersome and hard to understand. The whole survivor squad to actually increase your level thing is very cool. I like it. It makes it a little grindy, um, but I think it's different. It's different. It's unique. It gives a different aspect to the game of just in instead of just leveling up your main character, you actually have to level up squads. And honestly, this is another thing where you can skip sections and have different kinds of characters. Um, eventually, we think you're going to get unlimited skill points, so everyone will be at the same level minus the gear you have. But besides that, I think the leveling system is pretty unique and I like it. And lastly, before we get on to the cons, I just want to talk about the progression. The progression is slow, but once you get to the second area, it's the most fun I've had in this game yet. Going into a harder mission when I'm under leveled with a couple of friends is a blast where you're fighting tooth and nail and you're only winning because you're beating out the clock is some of the most fun I've had in this game. But speaking of progression, this segues really nicely into our first con, which we will talk about tomorrow. Sorry guys, this video was way too long. It was a total of like 20 minutes. I didn't want to do that to you guys, so I made it into a two-parter. Tomorrow will be the cons and part two. Please make sure to check it out. Uh, we are all hanging out at Tic Tac's Trading Post. You can find the video. The link will be in the description below. There's literally 15 of us hanging out, trading items, stuff like that. I stream daily. My schedule is posted everywhere. Come hang out on stream. Twitch.tv slash Rounded Tic Tac. YouTube.com slash Rounded Tic Tac. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow. Tic Tac out.